to a church like this before. I'm just kidding. Most people love each other. You guys are really excited. Um, we're, we're pumped. This is the final night of the Dauntless Conference, and we are excited um, to finish this thing off with the Lord in the best possible way. It's actually only the beginning. Um, I just want to say briefly before we get started, I'll say some other stuff later, but it's been a, an honor and a privilege to come and, and, and partner with this house to see the kingdom come here. Thank you so much for having us. Um, it's, been, it's been amazing, and we know that we are only able to come in and do this in places that have already done the groundwork, and uh, you guys have paid a price and, and sown so that we can come in and just, you know, say yes and amen to what's already going on. I believe God's going to bring an increase. Would you guys stand to your feet? We're going to start tonight off, and it's going to be good, it's going to be wild, and it's going to be crazy, and it's going to be holy. Does that sound good? So put your hands out, assume the position, right? Yeah. <laughs> holy Spirit, we ask you to come. <laughs> In this place tonight, we ask that you would, would come in power, that you would come in might, that you would come in authority. We ask that your presence would rest in a tangible, uh, heavy, uh, thick way, that your goodness would be so thick in here that we would have to open the windows and let some of it out, God. Lord, I pray um, that you would open our eyes to see and our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church tonight. We give you praise, glory, and honor because you're worthy and it's due your name. So we say, King of glory, have your glory tonight as we worship you in spirit and in truth.
Let's sing that out.
start to speak out. If you have a prayer language, start to sing it out, start to speak it out. Sing the 
enemy Cause the enemy has been defeated Death couldn't hold you Shout to God. Is the power 
see you tonight. Your healing mindsets. Your healing mindsets. Healing unhealthy thought patterns tonight. You're making all things new. Making all things new. You're making all things new between our
<laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Hallelujah. God is good. Yes. And all the time. You'll catch on in a second. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Can you lift up a shout in this house? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woo. It feels right in here. My goodness. Welcome to the final night of Dauntless. We're excited for you to be here, all of the, you that have been with us, and there's a few new people I see tonight. God is going to crash in this place tonight in the best possible way. It's going to be fantastic. Tonight is the impartation and commissioning service. Uh, Kale's going to be bringing the word of the Lord tonight. I want to do a couple things real quick. Would you let this worship team know that you appreciate all that they've sown into us this week? Come on. My Lord. You got to be careful when you step up here because there's so much oil going on up here. <laughs> Holy Ghost, it's thick in this place. Can I just say, like, I've known you guys for a minute, most of you, and that was fantastic. There's, they're going to new levels. It's more than, more than hype. Like, that's more than enthusiasm. That's like God in the midst of that. I'm stoked. You guys in this house at Hopewell, you guys should be very encouraged that you get to experience that on a regular basis. I'm super proud of those guys. Um, you know, you, you never, ah, never like take for granted the fact that you have young men and women who are sold out for Jesus within your congregations. Because all over the United States of America, particularly, there are churches where young people are no longer coming. There's better options out there. And so when you have people like that, you need to celebrate and rejoice and make a way for them to participate in what's going on. So I, I honor that and I, I honor the sons, the daughters, the fathers, and the mothers, right? And that's, a, that's the way we do it. Uh, we're very excited tonight. Um, I want to say really quickly, anyone that was a part of this conference that was a volunteer, would you please stand up really quickly? And if we could throw some house lights, would you guys give it up for these people that are standing because, and there are many that are in the back and yeah, thank you, especially Cindy. If you could get Cindy in here really quick, that would actually be good. I know she's probably doing a job, but as long as... Oh, there she is. Cindy, would you please come up here? Give Cindy a hand, guys. Come I want you all the way to the front. You're not allowed to stay in the back. Come, 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 come. <laughs> I want to pray over you and bless you in front of everyone. You, Cindy has been like the backbone behind this thing, and we want to pray for her really quickly. And whether you're comfortable with it or not, we're going all in, okay? Yeah. So extend your hands this way. Father, we bless her in the name of Jesus for every way that she's poured out and sown in. Lord, I pray that you would cause there to be a harvest, that you would pour back into her. Lord, we just declare filled to overflowing in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask for a fresh blessing, fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. I thank you for that joy. I thank you for that gladness. I just see the Lord visiting you in the morning. I just see the Lord visiting you in the morning, and I bless what he's doing. I say more of your presence, more of your glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. I thank you for Cindy. I say get a real good, God. Get a real good, God. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, there it is. Thank you, Cindy. Just don't, you just rest in that. John, you help her for a minute more, Lord. <laughs> Woo, double, double, double in Jesus' name. I'm going to make my announcements from this area because it feels good right here. Where is Mim? Mim, she fed us. Would you, if she's around, would you please send her to this spot right here? There's a good thing happening right here. This is really important. <laughs> I know she's somewhere. Even if she's late to the party, she's not too late to the party. But anyway, so we've got some other, I'm going to do this. You're good. Um, I'm going to do announcements like this. Are you okay with this? This is how we do things around Global Awakening. This is, uh, this is just a, you know, Saturday night, you know. So <laughs> I'm going to get happy. I don't know about you guys. Um, Uh-oh. What was I saying? I was making announcements, I think. 
We're getting ready to bless some people. No, I want to say thank you to all of you who have attended and been here throughout any portion of the event. Um, we can't do events if people don't come to them. So we're thankful that you came, that you sowed the, the price of admission, and then all of the tickets to get here, gas, hotels, lodging, and those of you who have sacrificed time to come and take off work. Uh, we really respect that. We honor it. From Global Awakening, from our house, dear, thank you for being a part of this. It's an honor and a privilege to sow into you. We've been so excited to see from the, from the night we got here, um, Thursday night, there was like immediately there was an ease about it. Immediately there was a heavy glory and presence on it. And it's all been building into something. And it's more than an emotional stirring. This is something that God is doing on a DNA foundational level in you. We believe in you. We want to say that. We don't just come preach heavy, heavy revy and heavy principles at people we don't think are mature enough to handle it. So you have taken in a lot this week. And we believe that the, the testimonies are not confined to Thursday to Saturday. The testimonies are going to come out in the weeks and months ahead, and you guys are going to see a shaking and a quaking and a good thing happen in this area. So we just bless you. We're so thankful uh, for you being here with us. And um, I, I feel like I'm supposed to say something, but I don't know what it is. I'm just really thankful. I, I feel like people come and do these things, and they don't say thank you enough. And I, like, I don't take this for granted. I get to go all around the world and like preach the gospel, and it's, it's, it's what I get to do and I'm like eternally grateful because I didn't I haven't always done that so thank you for coming being a part sewing all of that good stuff we love you you rock you're awesome uh, what I'm gonna do right now is introduce my sister Demetria Stallings would you welcome Demetria she comes to share for a second with you Give me a hug. Give me a hug. There you go. There you go. Wow, yeah, it is so good. I mean, come on. I'm excited about what God is doing. And I'm up here to talk about sowing. The Bible says in Genesis 8 and 22, it says there is a time, there is seed time and harvest. Can you say that with me? Seed time and harvest. Say it again. Seed time. Yo, it is really good up here, dude. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> this is a good place to sow into right now. And I'm not saying this as far as, again, we don't take offerings to manipulate you or to, but we do have things that have to be taken care of. And so what we're going to ask you um, is to sow. My thing is this. I have learned that as I have sown into the glory, my life has changed. Literally things that I have just thought about, God has given me as a daughter. And we talked about some of that earlier today. If you missed it, oh, well, no, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I like to have fun, right? You got to have fun in the house of God. And so what I want to challenge you is to sow into what God is doing. Dauntless is something that God is starting to, who has enjoyed themselves so far? <laughs> Justin has not asked me to say any of this. All he said is, sis, can you do the offering for us? And I was like, sure. And God began to download into me is that, Demetra, I want you also to sow into what I'm doing. And so I'm about to text to give. And listen, I'm here to speak, but I'm sowing into what I'm speaking into. Okay? There is a difference. I remember, I think, let me tell you something about sowing. I remember God began to teach me at an early age. I think I was like nine years old. And um, somebody, my mom and dad gave me an allowance. It was like, like $15 or something like that. And you know what I did with that? I took it to church and they taught me about give 10%, you know, the things of that tithe is 10% to God. And when I did that, I, I got to church and I looked at my mom and I said, I don't want to give 10%. I want to give it all. And she's like, honey, are you sure you want to give it all? I was like, yeah, I want to put it all in the offering basket. I put it in the offering basket. That night, this is how good God is. This is how much fun you can have with Jesus. It's not just in speaking out to people. It is also partnering with him in the things that you give unto people. Let me pause right there. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he what? Gave. Take that in. Soak it in. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He's not asking you to be generous, and he's not a generous God. Somebody catch that. I don't, want, I don't care what kind of trials you are walking through. Trust me, I have walked through financial poverty, even in my mindset. And God began to change that mindset. And when he began to change that mindset, I began to give at a different level. And I began to see at a different level. 
there's something in this air for real. I know, Kyle's gonna prove, I mean, Kale. I almost called, I did it again, I'm sorry. I love you though. <laughs> but listen, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So I put that money in to the offering that very same night. Somebody called my mother out to the parking lot. And when she called my mother, am I screaming? I'm sorry, I'm getting excited. You can turn me down. Can you tell? I'm an excited girl. Oh, I just feel powered because we're dauntless and just saying it. So anyway. So I, uh, when we got done with everything, my mom went out to the parking lot, we're leaving, and somebody tapped my mom and said, hey, I just want to bless your daughter um, with some clothes. And she's like, oh, that's awesome. And my mom thinking, maybe one or two outfits. We go to the ladies' trunk, and there's like three big bags full of clothes. The very night, that's how good our God is, and that's how fast he works. We got to break the mindset of poverty. I am not supposed to lack, period. But there's a principle in me not lacking. There's a principle when I give unto God and when I sow. It's not just giving my money. I am sowing into something, and that is why I have the shoes that I have on tonight. Because I have sown into something, and these were literally given to me. I have a Tumi bag. If y'all understand, Tumi, Tumi is expensive. I have a Gucci bag, authentic bag. If y'all understand, Gucci, Gucci is expensive. I mean the real one. I ain't say the New York one. I'm talking about the real one. But th I didn't buy it. It was given to me. Why? Not just because I said, oh, I'm going to give money because I got to get something. The Lord asked me to sow into something and God wanted to give to me just to tell me this principle works. And so what I want to ask you is what do you want to sow in tonight? Ask Holy Spirit, even in this moment, Holy Spirit, whoa, I feel there's something on this. I believe with all my heart what you sow tonight. And I'm not one of those prosperity. I mean, I believe God is a prosperous God. But I'm saying I'm not trying to manipulate you. What I am saying is I believe that there's such a principle that tonight what you sow into, it can be $3 and God can give you a house. The widows might. And so I ask you, ask God right now in this moment, we're going to take one second. I know I'm taking longer than I should, but we're going to do this real quickly. Ask Holy Spirit, put your hand on your heart. Say, Holy Spirit, what would you have me give tonight? It could be a dollar. If he says that, give that. It could be 50 cents. If he says that, give that. He could say 500. And trust me, even if, if he says it, trust me, do it. I have seen the miraculous. The kind of car I drive, I'm floored. It's because I sold. I sold. And when God asked me to sow and to partner with the right partners and into fertile ground, God began to show me you don't have to live in lack, Demetria. Sometimes I don't know how my mortgage is going to be paid and then all of a sudden, bam, it's paid. I have not gone without paying my mortgage. Why? Because God told me, do this, I did it, and bam. Okay? So I want you to get that. Soak it in. Are you asking, Holy Spirit? God already told me what I'm giving. I'm about to text to give. You can text to give. There's envelopes right here. Ushers, can you go ahead and pass those things out? Lift your hands if you need one of those. You can um, go ahead and do your credit card on here. You're giving into and sowing into fertile ground. Everything that you're giving into tonight is going to go into more dauntless things, more things that God has for global awakening. And so you're sowing into fertile ground. You can also give checks payable to Global Awakening. Again, I don't care if it's two pennies. All I'm saying is whoever, if somebody don't have something, I wish I had cash on me. I would, listen, if you don't have anything, ask your neighbor, hey, you got two pennies? I'm telling you, you sow into tonight. There's something on tonight. There's something. There's so much that's going to be released. Wow. Faith is in this room. Faith is a substance of things. Do you know your Bible? Hope for and the evidence of things what? Faith is a substance of things and the evidence of things. Faith is substance. When you looked up substance, substance is ultimate reality. Faith is my ultimate reality of what I hope for and what I don't see. I'm telling y'all. I can't wait to hear y'all testimonies. 
of what God will do this week for you. Okay, you guys ready to sew? Can we do something different? You can tell me no, bro. Can we do something different? Did I? Hebrews 11.1, 1, thank you. I just quoted it. Oh, 1-1-1, one, one, one. I'm not getting it. I just got it. Y'all, we talked about 11 today. I was like, thank you for correcting me. I was like, uh, I was like, I appreciate it. No. <laughs> Yes, that's awesome. Hebrews 11 and 1. My bro talked about that. Adam, right? Yes, that was the Bible quote of the day, right? Come through, Jesus. There's something on this 11. Y'all, I'm not playing. When I see numbers like this, y'all, hey, do this. If you don't believe me, test it out tonight. So, okay. So what I want to do is something different. And y'all, I'm trying to see where my brothers and sisters at from my persuasion. I'm just saying, can you lift your hands? Because I don't want to feel like I'm by myself. <laughs> I see my brother in the back. Hey, I see my brother way in the back. I just want to make sure I'm not by myself. I saw somebody else. I, thank you. Yes, exactly. Stand up. This is my sister from my persuasion. I know you got a black girl in you. <laughs> People say I got a white girl in me. I got a lot of, my brother say I got a little white girl in me. So I'm just saying, anyway, listen, so there's somebody over here that needs an envelope, right? Is that what, yeah. Or you're just saying you're black inside. Okay, just checking. Just didn't know, didn't know. I wasn't sure, didn't know. Um, yes, so into this, I'm telling you, try the spirit. It's amazing what he does. Okay, then we're gonna do something a little different. Um, Hey, Ben, can you guys get back up here really, really quick? I like using y'all. We're going to dance our way. Listen, what I'm telling you is God loves a cheerful giver, and I believe with all my heart that as you drop your seed into the ground. Do we have baskets, ushers? Ushers, can you stand up here with me? Come stand. Whoa, Sharaba Sita Kaye. Sorry, I'm excited. Where's Jude? Where's my buddy? I meant to have him come and sit, stand with me. Is Where's Jude? Jude, come here, buddy. My new friend. I meant to have you stand with me when I was preaching because I feel like the like God is on your life. Somebody get mom, dad, get your recorder out really quickly. I need to prophesy over this young man. What's up, dude? It's my new buddy, my new friend. God's hand is on his life. I meant to have you come and stand with me when I was preaching because you're going to preach the word of God. And I know you understand me. I don't have to talk to you like you're a kid because you are a lot, you're advanced. You have the mind of Christ. You're amazing. And you preach the word of God even now. Yeah, I just pray more encounters over you. In the name of Jesus. Whoa, there it is. There it is. Whoa, shut up. I, guys, I'm telling you, God's doing something in the children. Don't don't sleep on them. Don't sleep on them. I was in Brazil, and when I was in Brazil, whoa, sha. Y'all better give into this. I'm just telling y'all. You want your kids saved? It's not just about um, sowing um, in, um, hey, I want to do this. You can sow your time. You can sow your efforts. You can sow in different ways, not just in money. You can sow. And you're going to be a man of influence, Jude. A man that sows and reaps well. Whoa, you're going to teach people how to sow well. Prophesy, Jude. I see 10 countries that are going to call you. Even as your teenage years, mom and dad, you're going to have to make way. Whoa, because 10 countries are going to call him. He's going to preach even at the age of 15. There's going to be a lot going on with him. Healing signs, miracles, and wonders. You guys have done a great job with your children. I've watched you. I watched your little baby even. Show. Great depositing. You guys have sown well. And you're going to reap a harvest from your children. You guys are going to travel with them. And you all are also going to preach the gospel with them. It's going to be a family. They're going to think you're a circus at first. But then they're going to know you're the real deal. I love you, Jude. You were amazing. Can I have a hug, man? He just came up to me earlier and just started talking. He was like, what's up? I said, what's up? Yeah, fearless. Come stand with me. We're going to stand right here. All right. So what we're going to do is, Ben, I need y'all to do all of the glory. What y'all was doing? Y'all was doing it. Oh, unless y'all had another song. I ain't trying to rule y'all. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to ask you guys to stand up. I know church people be telling you to sit down, stand up. We got a robot going on. It's okay, but it's worth it. Again,
Again, if you don't have anything, ask your neighbor for a penny. Tell them to dig in their purse. I'm telling you, there's something on this. Woo! We're going to, the band is going to go. And what I want you to do is I want you, because we're sowing to something, when you sow into the ground, the seed that you sow is very particular. If you want to see oranges, what do you sow? Orange seeds, because you want to see a tree develop to have fruit. Am I correct? What happens in the natural is also in the spirit, okay? So, you want to see apples? You sow an apple seed because you want to see a tree with apples. So what I want you to do is get that seed in your hand. I want you to think about what you want to sow. What are you sowing into? Is it that your family is blessed and you are going to see a harvest with your family coming to the kingdom of God? What is it that you want to see? Arthritis healed. What is it that you want to see? I want you to get that in your mind. I remember when I needed a car. I put a car on my envelope and I saw my car come forth. What do you want to see, okay? And so we're going to dance. Some of you can dance. Just don't trample each other, okay? Yes, sir. You don't need an envelope to give either. You don't need an envelope to give either. Shaba, you better prophesy. So this is what we're going to do. If we can do this this way, if the back rows can go first and go this way. So this week, so we don't, we have some order, okay? We don't want to rush anybody. Y'all got it? Y'all ready? Here we go. One, two, go ahead. Okay, come and give, come and give. There you go, there you go. Come on the back rows first, there you go. Jude. All of the glory, oh. all of the glory. Yeah. All of the glory, all of the yeah, glory. Yeah, come on, Jude. All of there the you go, glory, yeah, we're rejoicing. you're doing and what we say God is that you're a God that does not lie and so we thank you God that as we have sown into what you are doing you are a God that is more than enough and you are a God that fills our cup so Father I thank you for every individual I prophesy that your seed will not fall to the ground I prophesy that you will see what you need in the land of the living and I prophesy that your sons and your daughters shall reap
Wow. That's the most fun I've had during an offering probably ever. I love... <laughs> That's fun, isn't it? You guys need to smile a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, Demetria, for doing that. I appreciate it so much. I love the diversity in the, the creativity and the way that God causes, you know, like you can have five different prophets in a room and you can have five radically different expressions of what the prophetic looks like, and they're all beautiful and they all reflect God in their own unique way. Demetria, I, I love what you've added to the mix, so thank you for being here. Um, yeah. I want to say... Um, I, I don't want to take a lot of time doing this because I already got to introduce him, but tonight I have the honor and privilege of introducing my friend. Um, he's a prophet, yes. He's a minister of the nations, yes, but he's my friend first. And uh, I, I get to go around the world and do what I love with the people that I love. And some of my best friends are also my associates, and we do we get to go minister revival in the nations. Kale is a real deal prophet to the nations. The Lord has opened doors that people don't get to peer into, and God is using him uh, to do great exploits, but he's also using him to be a friend to people who need a friend. And uh, tonight, um, sorry, there's all sorts of... Uh, feathery things floating around here. Um, tonight, God's going to show up and do business with his people, and uh, tonight, Kale's going to come and share his heart, and I just encourage you, you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you get a prophet's reward. You're, you're receiving a good, solid guy um, that the Lord thinks highly of tonight, so would you please stand and honor my friend Kale as he comes to minister the word tonight? <laughs> Thank you. Oh boy. So, so, <laughs> so, and the dad jokes begin. <laughs> Yeah, Holy Spirit, I thank you for what you're doing in this region. God, I thank you for what you're doing in the nations of the earth. And I simply ask for more. <laughs> God, I thank you that you're orchestrating one of the greatest moves we've ever witnessed. And we get to be a part of it. <laughs> and God, I thank you. I'm just blown away. God, I thank you that you move the same in South Africa as you do in Indonesia, as you do in Australia, as you do in Telford. <laughs> and we are seeing some of the most remarkable things. I am seeing stuff literally that I never thought I would witness. And I'm not exaggerating. I'm not saying that for like preaching theatrics. I'm seeing things where just a couple of weeks ago, I was in that closed nation that I can't tell you about. And I was just saying, this feels like what we've been reading in the history books. And we get to watch this and we get to witness this. And I love that if our hunger is to such a degree, then we will be able to witness it right here. <laughs> yeah. For the three of us that were excited, I'm joining you. You know, it's like, wow. And uh, I'm feeling a whole mishmash of things. That's a prophetic word for a lot. Um, <laughs> I don't know where to start. <laughs> it's just funny as uh, when Demetria said, people of my persuasion. <laughs> I was in South Africa a little while ago. I want to share with you this because I think it's actually it's something I've been processing a little while ago, for a while. Actually, I was in South Africa with uh, uh, one of my spiritual fathers, Bishop Joseph Garlington, if you know who he is, and he is a legend. <laughs> oh, Bishop, my Bishop. That's what I say whenever I see him, and he just deadpans me. You know, I love it. Uh, 
But I was in South Africa with him uh, in one of his networks, and we were ministering in uh, a, a huge black church there, and a massive network of what they got going on and all that, and I've never felt so white in my life. <laughs> and I'm from Canada, so that makes it even worse, <laughs> you know? It's like, I'm so expressive right now. <laughs> And it was amazing to me, and, and this is something I've been processing, and this is absolutely nowhere where I was going to go tonight, and it's already 8.30, so I'm going to see if I can do this as fast as I humanly can, because um, I literally already have two messages I'm going to try and hybrid here. Uh, but what I saw in the Church of South Africa, in the black church, was, was two different things. The first one shocked me, because we literally were getting uh, almost hate mail from the white churches, saying, why are you going to this place? <laughs> literally. And we were sending all the like, people who know me, they're sending messages all over the place. You got to go and see Kale. And I said, we'd love to, but we're never going to that city. And they actually started sending messages saying that we don't believe it's the real bishop and we don't believe it's the real Kale. They're faking it. <laughs> literally. And so I said, oh, we're in the perfect place. Because God always uses the least of these, quote unquote. He always uses the rejected. He always uses the ones that are outside the walls, always. Like, if you don't agree with that, you're going to have trouble reading your Bible. This is throughout the scripture. You know? And so I was excited. So I told this church, I said, I want to see what's going to happen. I, I'm excited for this. Explain to me what's going on. And they literally, what's going on in that place, in that area in South Africa, and it's not just South Africa, like we're working with a bunch of different nations now. The federal governments are asking me in to prophesy to them, and I don't know what to do with it other than say yes. Um, when in doubt, say yes. There's your teaching point for tonight. And you're like, I don't want to respond because then I might have to. Um, but so they took me around and quite literally I saw something that's at least, and I'm not exaggerating here, uh, I don't want to be like the evangelistic kind of person. I'm not exaggerating. I saw something that's probably 25 years ahead of what we're walking in here in North America. When it comes to redemption, when it comes to uh, societal transformation, and I felt so small and I felt so silly, quite literally, because we're all here talking about reformation and the, the reformation of America and Canada and all that kind of stuff, and they're quietly doing it and they're light years ahead. You know, we, I saw literally in, in this network, uh, there's, there's different classes, as you know, in South Africa, and I'm not just talking race, I'm talking uh, like socioeconomic, and we're, there's different classes. There's the townships, which are uh, extreme poverty, funded by the government in some ways, but then there's an illegal, so like it's the squatter's village that's outside of the township that's even more poor. And they brought me around and they showed me their, uh, the, the strategy that they have, and they, that's where they plant all their churches, all the satellite churches, is in the squatters villages, where the, literally, the, uh, I, I walked into some people's homes and it's a mud hut with a bed sheet for a door. And that's where they go, and they start that, and then there's, I, I don't, uh, I'm not, I'm all over the place. Can we just go till midnight? <laughs> I just came from a nation where I literally, I had to teach for 10 hours. It was no, that was what I did. And then I had to prophesy over everybody, every single person. I taught 10 hours a day for the last seven days. So I'm still in that. And all of you are like, is he joking? <laughs> nope. Anyway, um, no, I'm not going to go that long. It's going to be good though. Um, but they, uh, they showed me this whole system, this whole thing of how they're actually bringing reformation to an area. And they introduced me to some people and they, they're telling me their, their jobs. This one guy drives up in a beautiful Jaguar. And we're not saying that a Jaguar is anointed or anything. I'm just saying that this is an example. I'm like, wow, nice car. This guy must be a businessman. He says, yes, I am. And he said, I'm a self-made millionaire. I said, really? How, how'd you do that? And he said, I started in the squatter's village. And these people came and they believed in me and they taught me how to pray and they taught me the principles of the Bible and they taught me how to give and they taught me how to do all of this kind of stuff and the Lord touched him and blessed him and grew him and then they brought me to another person and another person and another person in this one city alone they had 15 self-made millionaires and they all came from the poorest of the poor illiterate no chance for education because they're outside of the uh, uh, outside of the government system and they showed me the process of what they're doing. They're literally, we're literally seeing a massive transformation that's going on there. And most of the church won't go there because they're too proud <laughs> or because they want to be the charity case <laughs> rather than going and learning and listening. 
you know, and it's kind of weird. This, this is not coming out in the way that I wanted it to. It seems, seems like a rebuke, but oh well. Um, <laughs> I'm leaving tomorrow. <laughs> I'll say happy things after this. <laughs> but all of this is, um, I don't know, I think even, Demetria, you being here, I showed you my notes, but I think there's more of a prophecy to it. And I've been waiting on this, and I've been praying for this for years. Literally, I've been praying for America and asking the Lord, what's the strategy for this nation? What's going on? Because uh, it seems pretty crazy <laughs> right now, in all honesty. And, and that's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a simple observation. And it doesn't matter to me if it's crazy, because it, all that matters is where are we going to focus our eyes? And to whom are we going to go? Obviously, we're going to go to Jesus, because he is the author of eternal life. But also here, where, what I like to do is I like to look throughout the cities that I go to and the nations that I go to. I like to see where is the wind blowing so I can go to that place and lift my sails rather than build something here and hope the Lord blows. You know, because oftentimes this is what we do in church is we'll build a structure, we'll build a, a big old ship, and then we all gather around it and try to hope the thing moves, you know, and we call it intercession. <laughs> we might have to edit that. This is live. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> this is the joy of the prophetic because then we see where the wind is blowing and then we know where to build. That's, that's the job. So I've been looking at that and I've been praying about that. I actually want to give a, a, a prophetic word to, to, to you, Demetria. <laughs> and this might be weird, but whatever. I'm just going to take a risk. You can throw me out tomorrow when I have to leave. So... Um, if there's any African-American women here, I want you to stand up. And, oh, hey, hey, there's two, yay. I know, that's a word of knowledge. I know there's one. Um, <laughs> but I feel like I've never shared this ever publicly. I've talked with a few leaders about it, but I'm, this is literally the first time I've been sharing it publicly ever. Oh, you can tell I'm nervous because I'm just repeating myself. Did I say that this is the first time I shared this publicly? <laughs> But I truly do believe that, and I, this is what I've been praying for the U.S., I truly do believe that revival and breakthrough is going to come through the black church in the United States of America. I really do believe this. And I, even more so, I truly do believe that the, some of the leaders of, the, of, of what's going to happen in this nation is going to come through the African-American women. I believe this with all of my heart, and uh, I can feel it already. I'm going to have my own little revival here. If I pass out... It's the Lord. You don't call the hospital. Um, well, check my pulse first. But I just want to prophesy over you, over my African-American sisters here. I want to prophesy over you because I feel like there's a key for revival in this region. And this is America. Yeah, it's a big one. And I don't know why I'm releasing it here, but I am. Uh, so there. But I feel like for this region that, that you as African-American women, you hold a key to revival in this state, in this region, and in this nation. And so I'm prophesying to you to pray because that is what you know how to do. This is part of your history. It is part of your inheritance. It is part of the strength in which you walk from coming from a place of purest hell and and injustice and violence and stuff that me as a white man can't even comprehend. I can't, especially as a Canadian, that's even twice as far away. But you have something that we don't have, and it is up to us as the white church to submit ourselves to the praying mamas. And I mean that actually submit ourselves. It's not up to us to say, oh, now let's gather around the African-American women and teach them how to pray. No, you keep your mouth shut and you sit down and you learn how to pray because these ladies have something that we do not have. And I've watched this. I've witnessed this. I've been going around America waiting until I can actually have a authority to be able to speak this. <laughs> and so I'm prophesying to you and to you, to you. I'm prophesying to you and to you. It is, it's, I feel like there is a commissioning that's coming tonight of greater authority, of greater justice, because you carry something I can't, because I don't have the history. I don't have the understanding, but I have the ability to come underneath and to learn and say, teach me how to pray. Teach me how to pray for my babies. Teach me how to pray for my family, for my people group. Teach me how to stand in a place of feeling so misunderstood and judged and alone 
so that I can engage with that and say, even so, Lord, come. And I, I am prophesying to you. I'm prophe this is going to be a whole night of prophecy. I'm prophesying to you guys. The key to revival in this region stands with the African-American church, and particularly with the black mamas, <laughs> with our black sisters. So I bless you to pray. And for the rest of us that's listening to this, I bless you to understand. You guys can sit down now if you want to, or you can roll around or do whatever you want. I don't care. But I know I'm going to start sharing this more, and I'm talking with some of my spiritual parents to share it more and all that kind of stuff. And it's fun to be able to share this stuff because it, sometimes it will really stir things in our hearts, stir what we hear on the media, it stirs misunderstandings that we don't have. When it comes to worldview, it's very important that we don't just study prophecy. We have to study world worldview, socioeconomics. We have to study, stutter? <laughs> Pretty good at that. We have to study all of these different elements and ask the reasons why and go deeper and find out where is your heart offended because God will always offend. Actually, I'm going to say that where's your mind offended because God will always offend your mind to see what's in your heart. Why would the Lord do it that way? Guess what? He just exposed something in your heart you get to deal with. Until we walk in together in unity, John 17, like I said, I said, we need to actually get into this. This is why I share this all over the world. And if you did your homework, you know what I'm talking about. And if you didn't, read John 14 through 17 a whole bunch. There you go. <laughs> Does that make sense? There's a key that's coming. When I, I, I talked to my, the, my friends who are leading, it's a massive network in South Africa. I was speaking to uh, over a thousand leaders. And I felt so ill-equipped until I gave the teaching and I'm about to give you guys tonight and revival ripped open in this place they're planting churches almost every single week now and it's amazing and they said that a white man has never once come and submitted themselves to their leadership and I've asked them to be on my global board now and I'm going to put it all over the world Kale Mumby submitting to the black leadership of South Africa and they started weeping and I said this has never happened before and I believe we can do stuff like this that is actually intercession and that our actions is more than just praying but we have to actually choose to to live this out and it's going to bring a shift into our regions and into our lives and all that kind of stuff I don't I don't know what's going to happen but I know I know we will ransom our nations Does this make sense to you guys Okay, I'll let you process that for a while later, but just go save the nation. How's that? Anyway. So this might actually segue into this, but... Um, Oh, man. Dimitri, you're going to love this. <laughs> the Lord speaks to me in numbers. <laughs> That's all my life. I feel like the prophetic rain man right now in particular. <laughs> if you guys know that movie, it's like one, 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 the Lord's coming, one, one, one. So um, if you don't know that, just <laughs> you're too young. So um, <laughs> we'll get into that in a second. But this has been a, a season change that I've been feeling, and that's one of the ways that I operate around the world, is I get times and seasons words, and then I get launched into all the different nations, and I speak that, and then the Lord will give me another one, and so it's nice, because I've been speaking this one teaching for like the last seven years, and I finally got another one, you know? <laughs> So anyway, the Lord told me to announce to everybody that what we are moving into as a corporate church, uh, and they're going to give you a bunch of scriptures, but what we're coming into, it starts in Psalm 126. Because what he told me to tell to everybody is that we're moving into a season where our dreams are coming true. And when he told me that, I'm like, don't, no, really? <laughs> Because I've heard so many times preachers like me come into a place like this and everything's going to be better. And then I go home and nothing's better. And I go home with that, like, as if my dreams are going to come true. And that's honestly, God offends the mind to see what's in my heart. Wow, there's a lot of junk in there, so I have to deal with that. I'm not joking, I actually have to. And it's a challenge for me. It takes, it's requiring me to have a lot of faith to be able to prophesy this to you. But I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, because how the Lord has been confirming it to me, that we are moving into a place where our dreams will sovereignly and supernaturally start coming true. And in the same way that we pray for uh, there to be corporate healing, like an atmosphere for healing, and we did that in one of the worship times, you called everybody who was sick to come up, and you know, and then people got healed, which is, it's nice. I like doing it that way rather than having to pray for everybody. <laughs> it's just more economic with my time. So, uh, 
bless the Lord. So anyway, <laughs> I thought we were going to spill everything there. The anointing's so strong, the water bottles are getting slain. So the, uh, <laughs> see, it's amazing. <laughs> but I know, and the atmosphere is going to happen tonight. We, uh, it is going to happen tonight. There's going to be shift, not just in this church, but in your churches, in your lives, the people that are represented here in this region. I'm prophesying this tonight. There is going to be a shift where we're moving out of that place where, why aren't my dreams coming true? How come they're getting stonewalled? How come every time I step into that, I'm feeling hurt and I'm feeling disillusioned? And why am I even holding on to this in the first place? And the Lord is saying to you, this is why I am here to announce to you that we are moving into a season of a sovereign shift where our dreams will start naturally unfolding. Our destiny, Psalm 139, get into that because you are God's greatest dream come true on planet Earth. And just study that scripture out. We're moving into that where just in the atmosphere, we're going to, uh, there's going to be forward momentum that's added on to our destiny. Does that make sense to you guys? I want to make sure that it makes sense. So that's what's happening. And the Lord told me to prophesy to everybody Psalm 126. And this is something that we need to start engaging with and we need to start praying. Because when I prophesy, when anybody prophesies, it only releases potential. So what I'm doing tonight is releasing to you the potential. I'm seeing the way that the wind is blowing literally around the world. And this, what we have to do now is start raising our sails. And how do we do that? We do that through prayer. We do that through falling in love with each other. We do that through unity. We do that through service. We do that through, through all manner of ways. But if we want to get into this, I'm encouraging you guys to read Psalm 126. In verse 1, it says this, When the Lord brought back the captive ones of Zion, we were like those who dream. And the Lord told me to start announcing to everybody that that spirit of captivity that's on our dreams, there's going to be a season of deliverance that's corporate or whatever's been holding us down, he's going to rip off. And I'm going to show you how he's going to rip that thing off so that we can start moving into the promised land. Does that make sense? This, could you guys identify with this one or uh, I want to make sure. Okay. 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 <laughs> wow. The Lord is right. Um, <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to get struck down for one of these jokes. When the Lord brought back the captive ones of Zion, we were those who dreamed. Verse 2, then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with joyful shouting. This is the fun part. And then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for them. For you, that's the, the you are the them. The Lord, it will be said among the nations for you, for our kingdom, for our family. The Lord has done great things for these Christians that have been so ostracized and made fun of, and especially in, the, in what's going on in the Western world, it will be said of you, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for them. Verse 3, the Lord has done great things for us. This is our response to hearing the word of the Lord. We just echo it right back. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. And if you don't know what to do with this stuff, just literally start praying this out line by line. You can get into that number four, or number four, verse four, restore our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Verse five, when those who sow in tears will reap with joyful shouting. And I'm here to prophesy to you that not only in this region, not only in this church, but in your family, in your destiny, in how you've been walking, those of you who've been sowing in tears, we're moving into a season where we literally are going to be reaping with joy. And I love that you gave such a strong word on sowing. This is kind of working out here. And the Lord, good job. I like this. <laughs> Verse 6, he goes to and fro weeping, carrying his bag of seed. His bag of seed. Those tears that you're weeping is literally seed. I went through a season, and I don't know where I'm going to go tonight, but I went through a season where I, was, I cried myself to sleep every single night for four years because of the torture that I was going through. And in the midst of that, God did something which is highly controversial in the church for some reason, but he gave me literally a gemstone. It appeared in front of my face, and it's shaped like a tear. And I showed it to somebody, and they had no idea what I was going through. And they picked it up out of my hand, and they said, Kale, God's giving you one of your tears back. And that helped get me through that hellish season that I had to go through. And I love this stuff because every single one of your tears is actually seed. And it says so in scripture that he carries all of the tears that we cry in a jar in heaven and he calls it treasure. God gave me one of those treasures back. 
I don't have it with me. Maybe I should start traveling with that. It'll probably increase the power of the testimony. <laughs> Other than, I have one, trust me. <laughs> Verse 6, you goes to and fro weeping, carrying his bag of seed. Every single tear that you cry for your family, for your lost sons and daughters, for your job, for your heartbreak, for all the stuff that you don't understand. It's seed, it's seed, it's seed. Verse six, the next half shall indeed come again with a shout of joy, carrying his sheaves with him. And I'm here to prophesy to you, we are moving into that season now. We're moving into that season where we said, did we miss our harvest? Are we missing the very point of what we're doing? Are we missing what we're going after? Why is my heart growing sick? <laughs> And that's the next verse that we have to add on to this, because the Lord told me to prophesy to everybody, Proverbs 13, verse 12. And in Proverbs 13, verse 12, I want to make sure I get this right. Proverbs 13, verse 12, it says this, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Yes. But a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. And I'm here to prophesy to you that this is the season we're moving into. We're moving into the season where you will be a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. That's also scripture. Start in Genesis, go to Revelation. I promise you, you'll find it. You get so much more out of it that way. You will be a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. You will be like the oaks of righteousness, like a cedar of Lebanon. You will be planted, and I'm here to prophesy to you and into this region, the winds of the Lord are blowing, and it is shifting us into this place out of heart sickness, where longing has been deferred, and our hope has been deferred, and all of our trying it has been deferred, and our ministry efforts have been deferred, and we tried this, that, and the other thing. And why is this a keep not working? And the Lord says that there's a spirit of captivity that's been released, and that spirit is about to be released again, I don't know, but not on us, but off of us, that his wind is going to blow. He's going to break those chains that have been holding our destinies down. Where it's easier for us to believe in a religious system, it's easier for us to believe in a pattern, it's easier for us to believe that maybe we missed it and God is going to use someone else, but he's not going to use me. And then we go into that place where our heart literally gets sick. Heart sick. <laughs> Hope deferred makes the heart sick. There is going to be healing of heart conditions as a prophetic sign of what's going on. And I really believe that. It's not just like, oh, let's say a charismaniac mumby is here. I believe this stuff. <laughs> but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Nothing, nothing stands against a big mighty tree. So how do we, what do we do in the midst of this? What do we do? How do we hear that word and say, okay, we can be encouraged by it, but for me, I hear that word and I'm apprehensive of it, just to be really, really honest, because I've heard it before. And it's like, eh, I don't want to believe because I know it's going to happen. I'm going to get disappointed again. But why we get disappointed oftentimes is when we hear prophetic word. I could prophesy over, over Kyle, hey, Kyle, mm, prophesy over him that he's going to be the next greatest movie star. And if he just sits in his room and prays, he's never going to be a movie star. Now, is the prophetic word wrong or was his response wrong? And so there's a lot of ownness on us when we start hearing the prophetic word. There's a lot of responsibility to us. And this is where a lot of times the prophetic office and the prophetic ministry has totally missed it. And we've created a lot of confusion, a lot of heart sickness in the church. And this is what me and Justin are doing. We're saying, okay, we have to fix this. We have to get into something and saying, okay, we have to release health. And so how do we hear a word like what I just said and then move into something? Because to me, it seems impossible. And it is impossible. If it is possible, you don't need God to help you do it. So that's just a fun thing. If what you're facing, if, what is, if your destiny that's in front of you is possible, you don't need God. So that's therefore just scrap it. <laughs> Some of you got that. The others are like, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Trust me. How do we move out of this place of captivity, Lord? <laughs> this is where it gets fun. Isaiah 55, verse 6. Isaiah 55, verse 6 says this, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. 
I love this scripture, and it's kind of funny because, and this is just kind of like the, the part of the character of God, I think. This is what I love about him is like, he says, I want to be found by you. Here I am, you know, and it's pretty easy. <laughs> I want to be found. I'm going to let myself be found by you. So seek me. He puts the dots so close together for us, which I really need. I don't know if you've got that yet. I get lost, like walking out the front door. <laughs> You guys laugh one time. I moved just a little while ago to my new little teeny tiny home that I live in. And I went for a walk. I just, I'm like, I know I get lost everywhere I go, so I'm just going to walk straight down the road. I had to GPS my way back home. (laughs) Oh, I got stories. Anyway, I'll tell you, I have to speed up. It's okay. I could just tell you all my Kale's getting lost stories. So... Seek the Lord while he may be found. This is the season that we're entering into where he's going to reveal himself so near and so dear, so close, so intimate with us. He's going to reveal himself and he's going to say, find me, find me. I dare you to find me when he's right here. When I hear those scriptures, I remember I'm reminded of, of when I feel far from him or I'm not aware of his presence, that's not really the time to seek him. That's the time that you go back into your discipline, the spiritual disciplines. That's time when you go back to the principles that you know work and you work those principles until you get back into his presence. That's, that's what it's for. And when you get into his presence, that's when you seek him. That's when you bask in his presence. That's when you bask in his glory. That's when you start asking for him to speak to you and to speak to you and to speak to you. But if you're feeling far, go back to those principles. If you don't know the principles, get tangled up in family and ask them to help lead you back into the secret place. <clears throat> Does that make sense to you guys? This is way deeper than, than I think. <laughs> Seek the Lord while he may be found. And I'm here to prophesy to you in your churches, in your uh, quiet times, in your prayer closets, in your cars, when you're praying with a family. Watch it because there's going to be a marked difference after tonight of his presence coming close. Don't just be like, yay, Jesus. <laughs> Seek him. Discipline yourself to seek him. Discipline yourself to find him. Discipline yourself to say, okay, his presence is close. And now, now what am I supposed to do? Because I'm dealing with heart sickness. I'm dealing with confusion. How come I haven't been healed? How come my family isn't saved? How come my bank account is always minus zero? Zero would be a praise report. How come, how come, how come? And that place, when you find his presence, seek him. And this is where it gets kind of fun. Because the Lord came to me. Well, I don't know who it was. But somebody came to me in my house A few months ago, I lived by myself, and I heard three loud knocks on my bedroom door. Boom, 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 just like that. It was in the middle of the night, whoa, woke me up out of a dead sleep. And I looked over at my my clock, and it was exactly 3.33 in the morning. See, told you like this. (laughs) Boom, 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 3.33 in the morning. I asked, Lord, what? what is going on? What are you doing? And the Lord told me, he said, what we're moving into is a season of Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Which is fun because I saw that up there on your announcements. You know, oh, that's a coincidence. No, it's not. The Lord is speaking. (laughs) The Lord is speaking. Pay attention. We're seeing this all over the place. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. And I love this verse, Jeremiah 33, verse 3, because it says, Call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and mighty things. And everybody stops there. Yay, tell me great and mighty things. But the next part, it says, which you do not yet know. Do not be intimidated by what you don't know. Do not be intimidated. Do not be confused. The spirit of confusion will come to you. And it's not even a spirit. Sometimes it's just self-doubt. Sometimes we just get so tired. Sometimes we get so, uh, what's the right word? Intimidated, I guess it would be, by our destiny, by our dreams, and by, by the need, and by the greatness of the need. Sometimes we get so run down by the constant battle that we forget that it's okay not to know. And this is the part which we need to zero in on. God, show me the great and mighty things which I do not yet know. Show me the mystery. Reveal to me the mystery. Reveal to me the blueprint so I can walk out of heart sickness and into a place where I'm a planting of the Lord. Does this make sense to you guys? And this is actually what the Lord is doing all around the world right now. There's a remarkable shift that's coming and we're shaking off that dust and we're taking off those old grave clothes and we're moving into a place where truly, truly, truly we're receiving the promise that we've always known was there. I'm watching this happen and it's going to happen here. (laughs) And there was no rejoicing. Um, (laughs) 
No, I'm kidding. I'm just poking you. I can see your brains going. Mine's just. Anyway, um, that's normal. Proverbs 25, verse 2. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the honor of kings and queens to search it out. God's not hiding from you. He never does that. But he is hiding for you. <laughs> Will you search for him? Will you seek him? Will you understand the season that we're coming into? Isaiah 55, verse 6. He is coming near. He is coming close. He is knocking on the doors of your heart. Seek him in that place and discipline yourself. Stop yourself and say, God, show me the great and mighty things which I do not yet know. What is point A? What is point B? What is point C? God, give me the mind of Christ. Pray out 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Very, it ends on there with the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Pray for wisdom. Pray Pray for all of this stuff. Ask the Lord for it and listen. Seek him while he may be found. Because he's giving us the tools. He's giving us the action. He's giving us the model for each one of us, both corporately and personally, to move out of the places of heart sickness and into glorious freedom. I know this is happening. For lots of us, it's going to take faith to say, well, yeah, and well, yeah. There's fact and there's truth. Both are correct, but only one's going to bring the change that you want in your life. So are you going to sit in the facts of heart sickness? I got stuff like that I'm dealing with too. I'm not just being brash here. It's a challenge for me where I'm seeing stuff in my heart and saying, yeah, that's a fact. Do I sit in that? Do I let myself stew in, in, in self-doubt? Do I let myself stew in that stuff? Or do I stand up and say, I will know the truth and the truth will set me free? My friends, we will know the truth, and the truth will set us free. But what we have to do is, how do we engage with this? How do we walk out of that? Seek the Lord, because he's coming close. Does this make sense? <laughs> it's kind of fun. So the Lord told me to tell everybody one last thing, Deuteronomy 11.11. 11. Deuteronomy 11.11, 11, I don't need to teach on this very much because Demetri already did, but Deuteronomy 11.11 11 is the hinge verse where God is prophesying to Israel. It's not really prophesying, he's just telling you this is what's going to happen, which I guess is prophecy. But it's the hinge verse of saying, I'm going to take you out of the land of captivity and bring you into the promised land. That's the hinge verse, Deuteronomy 11.11. 11. It's, a, it's a verse of transition. It's a verse of all of that stuff. But I want to warn you guys, because this is something that I've seen in the church already, uh, is a lot of us start talking about transition, and then lots of churches that talk about transition get stuck there. We have to remember that what transition is, when you're, when you're talking about like uh, shifting in your car, you don't put it into neutral and say, we're in transition. And you'll go and, brrr, and suddenly the car will stop. And, okay, well, let's try and shift it. And then the machine doesn't work anymore. It's not the machine's fault. It's yours. Operator error entirely. When it comes to transition, you have to make sure that we are still moving with forward momentum, that we understand transition is for a short season. And we have to figure out how are we going to go from gear one to gear two smoothly? How are we going to do that? Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Ask the Lord, for Jeremiah 33, verse 3, the great and mighty things which you do not yet know. Understand Proverbs 25, verse 2. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of you to search it out. And ask him for that, the, the mind map. Ask him for the points. Ask him for that stuff so we can walk out of heart sickness and into the place of being a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Does this make sense? It's all scripture. <laughs> this is where we're going. Deuteronomy 11:11. 11, 11. But the land into which you're about to cross to possess, a land of hills and valleys, it drinks water from the rain of heaven, a land for which the Lord your God cares. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it from the beginning even to the end of the year. This is you. This is a picture of you. This is where we are moving. Your dreams are going to come true. Psalm 126, it will be said among the nations of you, the Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. And so I'm here to encourage you, I hope. <laughs> I'm supposed to talk about the burning one still. I don't know about you, but I'm burning up here. <laughs> it's warm. <laughs> 
It's not oil. <laughs> but I'll anoint you with it. Anyway, um, <laughs> the sweat of the Lord. <laughs> Are you guys okay if I keep prophesying at you? It's good? If it's not, just receive a dream. <laughs> if you start snoring, I'm going to put the microphone in your face. So, um, so another season that we're coming into, and this might help us uh, a little bit more just to add on to it, and I'm gonna, I'll go through this as fast as I can because I, I want to pray for you. <laughs> But the season that we're moving into, uh, I need to prophesy over you because I know, I know what's coming. I know what's coming. I'm an intense dreamer, and I don't have time to tell you about that. Just I dream a lot. So there you go. Uh, that's the testimony. <laughs> but I had to dream about you. I had to dream about what we're doing right now. It's a very, very good thing. Uh, and in this dream, I had this dream a couple of years ago where... I became this old, old man. Have you guys ever had a dream like that where it's so real and you wake up from it, you're wondering, okay, which, which, what was, was that real? Was I just there? Am I here? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, I see people nodding. Yeah. <laughs> I had this dream and it was, it was a, a couple of years ago, actually, I had a dream where somebody gave me a lottery ticket for $26 million. And in my dream, I'm like, you want this is awesome. Like, I, I was figuring out where I'm going to put it, how I'm going to invest it, what I'm going to sow, all this kind of fun stuff. And then I woke up. <laughs> I've never tried so hard to fall back asleep. <laughs> and it's like, oh, let's go back there. No, nope. oh, let's go. <laughs> anyway, so it was a dream like that where I became this old man and I was confused because it was so real to me. It was so real and I was sitting in a room with all my spiritual sons and daughters. And there's probably, I don't know, 25, 30 there and I knew that they were all the leaders of different national moves of God, different national revivals. They were the leaders of all of these nations and they looked at me and it was kind of funny because I was trying to figure out what was going on, you know, I had a big old gut. It was awesome. I'm trying to hasten the day. If I get fatter, maybe that means revival is going to come. So we're going to get burgers after this. Anyway, um, it's my spiritual act of intercession. <laughs> Getting lazy and fat. Anyway, so in my dream, I was like that. I had big uh, white hair, a big, big white beard. I was still, I was confused trying to figure out what's going on. And they looked at me and they said, they said this amazing phrase. They said, Kale, tell us how the revival started. For the world is on fire. <laughs> And when they said that, they, they were like, Kale, you were there. And that's what I told them. I, I looked at them, and in that moment, I actually got downloaded with a lot of memories that haven't happened yet. And they're in there. I have these memories to the point where I was in Costa Rica just uh, this, the January of this year. And I had one of those moments where I walked into the room and I said, I know this place. I have been here before. And it was from this dream that I'm telling you right now. To such a degree that they said, there's somebody, there's a prophetic person who couldn't make it into this meeting. And I said, I know. And we're going to drive to their house and do not tell me how to get there because I will tell you. <laughs> Guess who drove right to their house? <laughs> I was just as shocked as the next person. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, we're going to get kidnapped and driving us right into the cartel. You know, but we made it. <clears throat> Not one single wrong turn. I knew how to do that. And I have all of these memories. I've had a couple sitting over there, just to let you guys know. Wow. And it's just amazing to me because I'm catching up to all the memories that got downloaded to me in that dream. And so in my dream, they asked me that, Kale, tell us, how did this revival start for the world is on fire? And I turned to them and I said, it started with the burning ones. <laughs> it started with the burning ones who locked themselves away in the burning rooms. And so they decided that, that, that all they wanted to do was just to worship and to pray and burn in the presence of the Lord. They wanted to be that incense that was on the altar and make a, a pleasing sacrifice to him. And I said, some people didn't know, or some people, they didn't pray very long. They would pray maybe an hour a week with three of their friends. And I said, it wasn't very much, but it was enough. And I said other people would gather together and, and they would have like a, 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 a text thing, train line going on. And they just text each other, are you burning? Are you still burning? And he said, that wasn't very much, but it was enough. It was effective. And then he said, other people, they would gather together and they would, they, would, they would pray for three or four days and learn how to just be in the presence of God. They'd gather from all over the place and not know each other. They'd come together for three or four days just to burn. And I said, it wasn't very long, but it was enough. And this is where our prophetic 101 goes, because uh, I'll look around. 
<laughs> what are we doing? We're burning. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes, yay, good job. We're doing that. We're doing what we saw, I saw in my dream. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? There's a reason for this. There's a reason for these gatherings. There's a reason for this because fire is going to fall and you're going to get commissioned to be a burning one. You're going to get commissioned to be part of what I saw in my dream, which I know I will see in my lifetime of a global revival. And I told these spiritual sons and daughters that led all these different revivals from all around the nations, I said that it started with the burning ones who locked themselves away in the burning rooms. I said nobody knew where it came from and nobody knew where it went, but it was as if all of a sudden from burning room to burning room to burning room to burning room, the fire just spilled over. And I said in a moment, there was a global awakening. I told Randy that and he liked it. <laughs> Global awakening? Yes, Kale. <laughs> he really liked that one. <laughs> Sorry, Randy. Um, it's one of my papas I can do that because I'll pay for it. In a moment, there was a global awakening. And I knew it at that moment. I knew it. I have these memories. I have these dreams. Sometimes I just turn on the news because I know one of these days, it's going to go on there. We're going to see stadium after stadium after stadium that's full of people just burning. It's not going to be one part of the church. It's going to be all of the church, rich and poor. (laughs) The fullness of the body of Christ. All of the races, all of the nations, together is one. Not caring who's winning, not caring who's above or below. I don't care about any of that stuff. I just want to be on the winning team. You know? If that means I'm on the bench while somebody else who's better than me is going to score the goal, then that's what I'm going to do because I just want to be on the winning team. I could care less if it's me. One day we're seeing that. We'll see it here in Telford, I promise you. So I want to add on to this a little bit more, if I can bring into you into some of my prophetic history. Is that okay? <laughs> That's a good laugh. I like that one. <laughs> it's anointed. So not in my dream anymore. This is real. Uh, in your country, they had this thing called the call. Is anybody familiar with that? <laughs> it's, this very calm and serene man named Lou Angle. <laughs> The only person I ever met in my life, I, I, met, I, I was talking to him once, and I'm like, okay, I'm fasting. Really? How long have you been fasting for? 10 days. What are, you gonna, what, what are you fasting for? Preparing myself for a 40 day. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's literally said to me. I'm like, I'm getting out of the room because I do not want that impartation. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> you, can, you can fast all you want. <laughs> Kale. <laughs> So it was at 7707 in Nashville, in the Titan Stadium, me and 70,000 of our closest friends gathered together to worship and pray for 12 hours. Is anybody here uh, at 7707? You were? Yes. That's awesome. Two. Yes. Okay. That's enough for me. Woo. Great and highly favored right here. You know, I was there too. So... Being Canadian, obviously, we just heard about it, me and a friend of mine, and we rented a a, a tour bus, threw 60 of our closest friends onto that, and said, we're going to go and stand with our brothers and sisters. And so we drove down there, down to Nashville, we took part in this whole thing, and the next day, uh, I was walking with some friends of mine, and, and... we, we just, some people that we just met and all that kind of fun stuff. We, we're in the middle of downtown Nashville and we go to Starbucks because obviously I'm addicted. So we go into Starbucks and we want to get like a, a nice coffee, meet our new friends that we met from America, all that fun stuff. And I order my drink and uh, this is something because I, I don't, I've taught a whole bunch of different stuff than I normally do. But normally in like conferences when you hear me teach, I'll talk about when I have angel visitations. And when you have a physical angel visitation, according to scripture, you're going to fall down as dead. And I believe there's two different kinds of where you can be aware of angels, and that's very, very good. But when it's physical in front of you, this is one of my litmus tests. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to be lights out, rolling around, babbling like an idiot for two or three hours. You know? So, downtown Nashville Starbucks. Can you guess where this one's going? <laughs> I order my drink, I turn around, I see the girl that I have just met, and there's literally, I can see with my eyes, an angel standing right behind her. And so I know what's about to happen, and that's okay in church. People are like, praise the Lord in church, woo 
this is great, you know, but downtown Nashville and Starbucks, I don't want to get arrested. It's not my country, <laughs> you know? And so I look at her, I go, <gasps> gasp like that, and I run out at Starbucks. <laughs> so I'm not going to do this. You guys probably have more faith than I do, but I don't want to do this in downtown Nashville. So this poor girl, all she knows, this is why we have the Ministry of Inner Healing. All this girl knows is I turn around, I look at her, I go, ah, and run away. <laughs> you know, this poor thing, you know, what's the lie that you're believing? So anyway, <laughs> so some friends of mine who know me quite well, they know when I'm having a spiritual encounter and they start laughing and like, ah. <laughs> Kale probably just saw any of your angels. You should go outside and ask them about it. And I'm no word of a lie. I, and I can bring people here, and I won't even be here. I'll let them tell the story all on their own, and they will tell you the exact same stories I'm telling you now. And I'm literally standing in the middle of the Starbucks parking lot. <laughs> like, keep it together, Mumby. I don't want to have my circuits fried here. So I'm standing, <laughs> like lamazing or something. I'm just like, ah, trying to figure out what's going on. And this girl comes out of the door, and I'm scared. I'm like, get away from me. I'm clean. You know, and so she walks up to me, and she's like, Kale, did you see an angel behind me? And I, yeah. And I'm doing okay, so I figure I can share this thing. And I'm looking around. There's no angel waiting. So I, 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 whenever an angel appears to people in the Bible, also they always come with a message. And that's part of the joy of the prophetic. You always have to interpret the revelation that you're getting it or that you're getting so that you can apply it. And so you don't sound like a kook, you know? <laughs> and so I interpreted the revelation that I got. I gave her the prophetic word and guess what happened? <laughs> she goes, oh, and hits the ground and she starts rolling around screaming. <laughs> and I'm like, awesome. <laughs> and I know all of you would have gotten out your soapbox and started preaching the word of the Lord, but I hid. I'm like, I wasn't me. I didn't hit her. <laughs> She's not on drugs that I know of, you know, <laughs> help. And so I'm literally trying to figure out what's going on. People come out of the Starbucks because they're way more of a gentleman than I am. They reach down to help her. The moment they touch her, we don't know these people. They're complete strangers. The moment they touch her, they fall to the ground, and start rolling around screaming as well. <laughs> At this point, I'm literally sneaking away into the bushes. I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> help me, Jesus. <laughs> I don't know if you know who Danny Silk is, but he has this thing called like powerful choices and all that kind of stuff. And the part of that is like, you've made a mess, you need to clean it up. So I'm like, Jesus, you've made a mess. I'm going to empower you, God of the universe, to clean this mess up. I'm gonna watch from behind the bushes, you know? <laughs> I, don't en I, I don't encourage you to Danny Silk the Lord, but... <laughs> There's a whole pile of people rolling around screaming. I'm, and I'm not exaggerating, I'm actually in the bushes. I'm in the bushes, panicking. Cars are driving around these people. Finally, some other people in our group who got more of a spiritual spine than any one of us, they're able to fish out this poor girl underneath this pile of writhing people. They put her arms around their necks and we start dragging her to the hotel. And her legs are literally clacking down the sidewalk like that. She is out. I'm standing behind about 20 feet pastoring it. Mm, yes, yes. <laughs> Translation, I was terrified. Like, I'm gonna empower you and I'll teach you about it later. So, so she's getting dragged down the sidewalk. She's shouting prophecy at every single person that's walking past us. Like shouting, her eyes are closed out of the top of her lungs and people are freaking out. I literally see somebody at the, at the edge of one of the streets and he crosses his arms and shakes his head and crosses the street. Like, take me with you, <laughs> you know? It's like... Then all of a sudden she stops. Boom, she stands right up like that. She points her finger right in my face and shouts this phrase. She goes, the land, the land, the land. It's like a penguin in a desert. It makes no sense, but you have to move there. Makes sense, right? <laughs> what she didn't know, what nobody knew, except for maybe four or five people, was the day before that I went to Nashville, a businessman called me up and he, he's, a, he's a welder. He owns a welding business, so a huge man, rough guy, loves the Lord. And he said, Kale, I just bought a big chunk of land. I just prayer walked the whole thing. When I was done, I heard the Lord say, invite the prophet to live on the land. Then he paused and said, I don't know anybody who's as prophetic as you, so you want to live here? <laughs> and I'm like, aw, sweet welder man. No. <laughs> 
because it made no sense for me to move to this place. In Canada, much like this region, we have this thing called winter. <laughs> Blizzards and snow. This is two hours, two and a half hours to the closest airport either direction. It made no sense for me to move there. I travel a lot. Last year I was home, I was home for 95 days. I travel a lot, it makes no sense for me to move to this land, you know? And so I thought, God bless your heart. Is that what we're saying in the South? Bless your heart, <laughs> right? Meaning you're an idiot. Like, bless your heart, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. But how kind of you. Fast forward 48 hours. The land, the land, the land. It's like a penguin in a desert. It makes no sense, but you have to move there. So I got my marching orders. <laughs> Here's, here's prophetic, uh, the next phase of our prophetic teaching tonight. When somebody screams at you in your face like that, do it. <laughs> so I do, oh, this is awesome. I don't have time to, to unpack all the years of other visitations that I've had to lead up into this. Stuff that, uh, maybe we can do like an appendix after this. Tell you a story I rarely tell. Getting chased down in the streets of Jerusalem by underground prophets. <laughs> That was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I can. So anyway, <laughs> I'll tell you the very, very quick version. They said, we've been sent. We've been praying for you for the last five years. Here's every single thing that you did in the last five years, and they did it accurately. They been, we've said, we've been waiting for you to come to the land of, of Jerusalem, to the land of Israel, to the apple of God's eye, to the highest place in all of the universe. And if you know the Jewish thought, that's actually what they believe from the high place that Israel is the highest place. And they said, from this place that we've been told to wait for you, we've been praying for you because you're one of the prophets to the nations. I can't believe I'm saying this right now because we're being, well, here we go. <laughs> I normally say this when I'm not being broadcast. Everyone watching, just plug your ears. So, um, <laughs> and so they said, uh, you don't have authority in the land unless you're given the right hand of fellowship. And we've been sent here. And they did that. Boom. We're extending to you the right hand of fellowship so that you can have honor and you can have authority in this land. And said, we anoint you and we commission you as a prophet to the nations. Now go from this high place and bring the kingdom of God everywhere. I'm never, they walked up to me on the street. <laughs> That's about five minutes of the whole story. It's insane. So anyway, land, the land, the land, penguin in a desert. <laughs> she also started shouting at the top of her lungs. She said, you will receive an angel, of, uh, an angel visitation. It'll be the angel of fire. When you receive this angel visitation, it's a sign of the next great awakening. So it'll be marked by signs and wonders. It'll be marked by fire and it'll be led by the young people, which I'm excited about. Because I've been watching what's happening. I'm getting out of the young people. <laughs> I'm now getting into the middle-aged people. <laughs> and I'm so excited because I feel like one of the greatest roles that I get to be is to be a father to the next generation. And I want to say that because we were talking about the young generation, but I was actually feeling that in worship tonight. Just remember, there's an equal, if not greater, commissioning coming to the grandparents. I'm watching my parents, my, who are now grandparents, walking into something, and it's stunning. We need all of the generations to be walking together. The zeal of the youth with the wisdom of the fathers will be unstoppable. I promise you that. As we learn to yield, as we learn to submit one to another. It's going to be difficult, but I know we can do it. <laughs> Is this okay, guys? I know I'm going a little bit longer, but whatever. Whatever. You'll receive an angel visitation. It'll be the angel of fire. I get so excited. I know, okay, I'm going to go back home, pack all my bags. I did that. I moved onto the land. People thought it was crazy, as you still do. And um, I'm like, yeah, so we, we accept that one. So I move onto the land. I lived in a mobile home. I named it my land yacht, you know. <laughs> I love that thing. I, I set up it since I'm prophetic and I, I like all these, I get little meaningful things from the nations that I travel and I got lots of prophetic gifts so I set them all up. You know, family heirloom Bible, I open it up to uh, Jeremiah because that sounds very prophetic. You know, put my gemstone on it. <laughs> I'm going to set this place up as a, uh, the land yacht of encounter. <laughs> 
And I was in there for about a, a month and praying and worshiping, wondering when is this angel visitation going to come. And about a month into it, I get woken up out of a dead sleep in my room and... Uh, you can you generally tell pretty quick when it's a good visitation or a bad visitation. Because <laughs> of like fear, sulfur, horns. Don't believe those ones, you know? Those are the bad guys. <laughs> and so I'm sta- I, I get woken up. I've never dealt with fear in my life, literally. And I, I, it is like utter terror that's going on. Utter terror. And I stand there. I, 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 I'm awake and there's this woman dressed in white. And she's got a big old wand in her hand. What are you talking about? I know I'm prophesying. (laughs) The sun, I know there's something happening. Anyway, prophetic fights. So um, she stands over me and she goes, she says this phrase and she goes, we hate who you are. We hate what you're doing. If you do not stop, our assignment is to ensure you will never rest again. And I don't have time, so I'm not going to unpack this one all that much, nor do I want to bring glory to the devil because I don't like him. (laughs) But I went into a season, and this is what I kind of talked to you guys about. Uh, I went into a season where that literally happened for four years straight. And they wouldn't just appear and say that, we hate who you are, we hate you doing, or Simon, you're going to never rest again. They delivered on that. I developed chronic insomnia. I had to go on a lot of medication just to sleep and just to bring myself into stability. And I went into this season where I talked about it once already. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because it illustrates the point, I think, where I went into a season where I had a very, very strong decision to make of do I believe the facts of my life, that I felt like a total orphan, that I felt abandoned, that I looked at everything about my life and it all fell apart. It all fell apart. My mind, you try not sleeping for years at a time and see how well you do. Actually, don't do that. Just take my word for it. It's not a fun thing. I lost my friends, I lost my money, I lost everything, I lost reputation, all of that stuff. And I had to deal, am I going to stand in those facts, or am I going to get my face into this thing, no matter how betrayed I feel by it, and say, no, even so, I believe this is as truth. And I have two realities to engage with. And I had to fight to engage with that one for four years, having hours of demonic visitation every single night. I always knew how bad it would be because of how, nah, I'm not going to tell you that. It was just not fun. <laughs> and that's in the midst of that whole season where God gave me that gemstone. Because I'd sit at the edge of my bed weeping. And there's Psalms like that saying, I feel like I've been thrown down into a pit. Why, O oh Lord, have you forsaken me? And it says it's in one of the Psalms and then it pauses and says, even so, Lord, you are good. <laughs> We have to, and we're all going to come into that season. And the reason why I'm telling you this is not so that you go into a battle like that. I don't believe that for one second that if you're anointed, that you have to fight a battle for this. But what I do believe is that I've earned authority and we're going to pray because some of you are dealing with that stuff and it's going to break off your life tonight. And I got a lot of faith for that. I'm going to impart, this is going to be part of the impartation that you will never have to fight a battle like this because I did. And I'm going to give you the keys and we're going to multiply this and there's going to be a massive amount of success, a massive amount of victory that gets released into Telford. That's what the Lord does. My victory can be your victory and that's like, hey, that's a fun thing to prophesy at conferences. No, my victory is your victory. And we're going to release this thing. We're going, to see a, we're going to see heart sickness eradicated in this area. We're going to see people talking to us. They, we will be like those who dreamed. Because this captivity that's on our dreams is going to get ripped off tonight. So in this whole experience, I have to say this. I'm going to go all over the timeline. That experience ended. I always forget to say this. So we're going to do a little pause. We're going to come out of that and theatrical trailer. Do, 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 do. The experience ended. I'm fine now. There you go. <laughs> it ended a while ago. I moved off of that land. I don't live there anymore. And I'm actually in a season now of stunning uh, retribution. <laughs> restoration. I love that when the devil comes and he steals from you, God comes and says, give it all back. Yeah, Yeah, now seven more times. (laughs) You know, it's pretty awesome. I love that about him. You're going to enter into that as well. Because we're entering into the Jeremiah 33 verse 3 season of our heart sickness and we don't know how to get there. We're going to ask the Lord because he's saying, seek me while I may be found. Isaiah 55 verse 6. (laughs) Call on me while I am near. We're moving into this, guys, because you guys are actually the burning ones. This is your destiny. This is, this is who you are in this region. <laughs> so in the middle of this whole thing, is at 5.55 in the evening, 
5.55 in the evening, I used to sit in my, I had an a armchair recliner thingy, and I'd turn on my uh, movies with my laptop, and I'd put the headphones on, I'd crank it as loud as it would go, because I would drown out the voices I was hearing. It would drown out the, when you get super tired and super worn down like that, sometimes your self-talk isn't all that great. It's nothing to do with spiritual warfare, you're just exhausted. And so my self-talk was awful. Because I knew in about five hours, I'm going to go to bed, and I could hear them say, oh, man, you suck. You're a failure. Nobody likes you. That's what I had to sit through for hours a night for four years. And so I'd crank up the sound and all that stuff, and I was sitting there numbing myself out. And at 5.55 in the evening, I looked up, and I said, awesome, now my land yacht's on fire. Sweet Jesus, yay, move over here. You'll receive an angel visitation. Everything's going to be great. I lost my mind. Now my land yacht's on fire. Then I paused and said, wait, wait a minute. It's not being consumed. Wait a minute. It's, there's a pillar of fire in my house. Wait a minute. I feel pretty good. I think I'm having an angel visitation. So prophetic, here's your prophetic school again in this one. When you're having an angel visitation, press pause in your movie. <laughs> Take the headphones off. <laughs> That's what I did. It's, it's good, good, good form. So I did that. And I remember my brain was just, again, it was melting. What am I supposed to do? And I remember, okay, every time an angel appears, it has a message. So I'm sitting there, uh, you, uh, pillar thing, guy, pillar, fire. Uh, do you have a message? That's literally what I said. And when I said that, boom, went right up into my face like that. It grew a finger and a thumb somehow, and it put it in my face, and it shouted. The windows rattled. That's how loud it was. And it said, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. Just like that. Fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. And then it echoed three times again, tell the people, tell the people, tell the people. And when he said that, I went into an open vision because apparently having an angel visitation wasn't enough. <laughs> Thick head. So, <laughs> so I go into an open vision and I see all of these people who are consumed by the fire. And I watch as they say, we're giving everything. We're the revival generation. We're going after, we're going to go and sell everything for the Lord. Yay! They committed themselves to all this stuff, and they, boom, they all started running. And I saw all these pathways of fire go all over the place. And then one by one by one by one, they hit this massive wall. And on the wall was written discouragement, failure, cancer, sickness, bankruptcy, addiction, all manner of sin was written all over this thing. Anxiety, discouragement, if I said that already, depression, all of these words, boom, they all hit this wall. And they looked around and they said, they looked to the side and said, we don't want to go over there. And if we're not going to go over there and we don't go, we're not going back to the way things were, but God, where are you? And they entered into the heart sickness. What are we supposed to do? We gave everything. How come we're hitting this wall? And the angel of the Lord, he told me to announce to the people, he said, I'm going to go everywhere you go, and I'm going to commission fire, I'm going to commission the burning ones, I'm going to release fresh fire, but more than that, announce to the people that whatever wall that you're standing in front of today, whatever wall that has been stopping you, whatever wall that has been holding your dreams captive, announce to them that this is the year that those walls fall down. And so I'm here to prophesy to you, this is the year that the walls fall down. And I'm prophesying to you, Telford, that this is the year that you will experience some of the most explosive fire you have ever encountered. It's not going to come like how it did. It's going to come like how it is. It might look a little different. It might experience things a little different. But you guys in this church, in your home, you're going to burn. You are going to burn. And it's going to burn away the dross. It's going to burn away that captivity. It's going to burn away the heart sickness. Because this year is the year that you receive this fresh fire. People always ask me, well, okay, when did that dream happen? Because what year was that? And I said, I don't care because it's the year of the Lord's favor. And it's every year that will be the years of the Lord's favor, just as every single day is the day of salvation. The timing with God is a unique thing. And I'm here, it's, a, it's a prophetic language. We are going to graduate. We are going to move into another season starting tonight. I have a lot of faith for this because I am watching this happen all over the nations. <laughs> oh, I'm getting growly again. <laughs> it's not a demon. Anyway, um, I had the visitation. I still had to fight for another two years after that before I got released from that. Why did that happen? I don't know. Nor do I care. Actually, one of the few times I've been rebuked by my dad, he sat me down and he says, we are never going to ask why. 
But what we will tell everybody is we know the truth because the truth will set us free. I am a blood-bought son of Christ. I am seated above and not beneath. Nothing will ever separate me from the love of my Father. I know all of this stuff, and this is what I grit my teeth, and I had to choose to believe it, even though everything in my life said it's a lie. And now I know. I know. My God is the most faithful God that's ever been. He's the only God that's ever been. (laughs) He's a good father, and he's faithful, and he's true. And each one of us, and I, I had to experience this for a while too, sometimes our circumstances lie. My life lied. My emotions lied, my bank account lied, my health lied, but Jesus never did, and his truth never changed. We can build our life on the facts, or we can build our life on the rock. And when the wind comes, (laughs) we're not moving. I'm not moving. I was an old man sitting in a room with my spiritual sons and daughters. I said, Kale, how did this revival start? For the world is on fire. (laughs) I looked at my spiritual sons and daughters and I said, it started with the burning ones who locked themselves away in the burning rooms. They chose to do nothing other than just know him, know his presence, know his love, and just burn. (laughs) You're the burning ones. You, my friends, are the burning ones. And the fire is going to fall tonight. It's going to burn up all of this stuff so that we become dauntless, <laughs> fearless, so we can look the eyes of facts, give a good old high five, and keep right on moving. Thanks, facts. Peace. Going to go live in the truth now? You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And the truth is, God has a plan for your life. The truth is, it will be said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for you, and you are glad. The truth is, we are moving into a season where there's going to be a sovereign visitation of his presence so that we can seek him and we can find him, and he is going to release our dreams. There's going to be that captivity ripped off, and it's starting tonight. It's starting tonight. I'm prophesying this to you. The truth is we are moving Deuteronomy 11.11 out of the place of captivity into the promised land where you're always supposed to be. A land that the rain of heaven falls on it and the eyes of God are on it from the beginning to the end of the year. This is your destiny. This is your inheritance. So every single person in this room who identifies with this and says, I want to be one of these burning ones, I want you to stand up right now. Do you guys mind coming up and that's you playing the guitar, although it looks like I'm playing the trumpet. I'm just going to ask those two, the rest of the worship team, stay down here. So where are you going? <laughs> Thanks. And he leaves. All right. <laughs> We're going to do some work first, because you're part of my inheritance. (laughs) You're part of the retribution of the payback, and you're going to get this, and you're going to go get yours. (laughs) So before we go anywhere, I'm just going to address some things in the spirit. None of this is your fault, so don't feel any condemnation or guilt. The devil's a liar takes pot shots at us. Sometimes the circumstances of our life, we, it's, my life turned into a nightmare for quite a while. It's not fun. I'm still working at stuff to get out of that, both in my own heart, of belief systems and getting healing. I just want to be open and honest with you guys with that. If you're wounded, go get healing. I see a counselor. It's fine. I still got stuff I'm paying for from that. But I want my... I want to get restored. It's okay. It's okay. (laughs) But I love what Justin said. Man, God is so much better than the devil is bad. 
So Holy Spirit, I'm asking for my friends, I'm asking for my family, that any wall that they are coming up against right now, God, I thank you that you've allowed us, even this weekend, to all corporately enter into your name. So in your name, I speak to these walls and I say, you have to fall now. You got no right to my family. You have no right to my friends here in Telford and whoever's listening and watching, you have no right. And so I address you walls in the name of my king. Fall now in Jesus' name. All the walls, any walls of depression and of anxiety, mental illness, I thought I went crazy. I tried to check myself into a hospital, didn't work. I understand this road, I can identify with it. I had to take medication. I'm just saying this so that we can take down the walls of shame. I'm, I'm telling all of you guys, it's okay. Because I know a redeemer. There is a redeemer. Jesus, God's own son. <laughs> and he's moving into the room right now to take these walls down and redeem all that the enemy has stolen. So I speak to the walls of anxiety and I say, fall down. You got no right to my family. Of addiction, of shame, depression, fall now. You got no right to my family. Of sin, of chronic failure, well, these walls come down now in Jesus' name. Depression, anxiety, no right here. I give you new marching orders, and that's to lay your face to the ground. I just prophesy to every single one of you now, into your spiritual realm, I prophesy to you. I speak to the spiritual realm. Whatever is low, I call it to be raised up in Jesus' name. Whatever is high, I call you to come down now in the name of my King. Whatever is crooked in front of you, I declare, I prophesy a straight path. And all these walls that were holding back the church in Telford, I say now they will be a runway, both of the taking off of this church and for the landing strip of the glory of the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, do some work in our spiritual realm. Do some work around us. Whatever wall that's been holding us back, I prophesy, turn into a hallway so we can run into the throne room of heaven. That's what they're for. He puts our boundaries in good places. So Jesus, King of Kings, says it in Hebrews chapter 11. It talks about people that are longing for a God who's a city, whose builder and maker is God. He's the architect. He's the man with the blueprints. So Lord, release the blueprints into every single one of our spiritual lives right now. And whatever has been holding us back, I prophesy now deliverance. Deliverance of identity. Deliverance of giftedness, deliverance of business, deliverance of what you're called to do. I prophesy a, a, a spirit of deliverance to lift off of that, that captivity of all of your dreams in Psalm 126. I lift off the heaviness. I lift off the weariness. I lift off the shame. You were made in the image of God. In Psalm 139, it says, Great are your works, O God. My soul knows it very well. In context, it's not talking about the mountains. It's not talking about the sunset. It's not talking about the ocean or the sky. It's talking about what you see in the mirror. It's the context of that. Great are your works, O oh Lord. My soul knows it very well. Lord, I'm asking for that impartation to come into this room, that we will know the greatness of God, that we will know the great works of God that is you. You're a dream come true. And nothing will stand in the way of the dream of my God. No height, no depth, not even an angel or a demon. Not a principality, not the power. Nothing will separate you from the love of your Father. Hmm. I'm going to invite you to do a prophetic action with me.
It's gonna be, it's gonna be hard. I know that. Some of you are gonna struggle with this. Because I am right now. <laughs> Proverbs 13, verse 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Deuteronomy 11, 11, You're gonna step out of the place of captivity into the promised land. Jeremiah 33, verse 3, is going to show us great and unsearchable things that we do not yet know. Isaiah 55, verse 6, we're going to call on him while he's near so we can have the blueprint of how to walk out of that so that we can be a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. And people will say of Telford and of you all around the world, the Lord has done great things for you. Our mouths will be filled with laughter. The seed that we've been sowing, the sheaves are coming back and it's starting tonight. And if you want to walk out of that place of heart sickness and into the place of saying, I am signing up to be a burning one. The prophetic action isn't just coming to the altar because that's the thing to do. The prophetic action is where we stand right now, I'm going to invite you to come up here because we're walking out of one place and into another. And if you want to do this, Go ahead. I'm going to invite our speakers team. If you guys want to come up here. I get raptured. Um, it's like, wow, we all missed it. You're my dream come true. <laughs> You're God's dream come true. You're the burning ones. You're the burning ones. <laughs> so however you want to receive it, I'm just going to prophesy over you. Close your eyes or open one. I do that a lot. See where they are, you know. <laughs> Lift up your hands. Do whatever you want. Fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. In the name of my Lord, I release fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. Fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. Lord, I'm asking that you'd release your fire from heaven to come into this place. Your fire from heaven. Lord, I'm asking for that impartation, which you promised me. For the impartation straight from heaven. God, release the burning ones in this room. You are the burning ones. You are the burning ones. It's you. It's not the you beside you. It's you. You're the burning ones. So receive the fire from God. We're going to pray for you, but you don't necessarily need us to pray for you. This is all about the Lord. We're just going to bless what the Holy Spirit's doing. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. More, Lord. So I've asked these two to, to play over us, and I did this intentionally. Because oftentimes in this, we're going to want the big, loud band and go, rah, 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 but then we get distracted. And I want us to focus on the Lord tonight. And they're going to sing over us. They're going to worship over us. They're going to prophesy over us. We're going to pray for you. It's all about the Lord tonight. You don't need me to pray for you. You need Demetria <laughs> and Justin. I'm going to leave. No, anyway, um, come back, Holy Spirit. Well, you don't need us to pray for you. Focus on the Lord. We're literally going to bless what the Lord's doing. I promise you this. Tonight's the night. You're walking out of heart sickness. Tonight's the night. You're walking into that fresh fire. 
Yeah, we might have to deal with stuff in our heart. It's okay, I still am. That's normal, it's normal. Don't get distracted by that, don't get discouraged by that, it's normal. But walk, walk into your promise. So yeah, let's, let's go. If you wanna pray for them, go ahead. Just sing over us. going to coach us a little bit. No. Don't ask. <laughs> Just receive. Oftentimes we ask for what is already ours and just thank the Lord. Say, I am on fire. Thank you for the fire. Breathe it in. Drink it in. He's not holding anything back. And so it's a challenge sometimes of, well, how should I pray? Figure it out. You are the burning ones. There's no withholding spirit in Jesus. And you don't even have to ask that. Just worship him. Just love him. He is the man of fire. It says in scripture that he has fire in his where? <laughs> his eyes. So look at them. The best way that you do that is just tell him you love him. <laughs> tell him how incredible he is. consumed. <laughs> and one more thing. This is practical. It's 10 o'clock. You're not being held ransom. If you have to go, don't feel any shame or embarrassment. Remember, the Holy Spirit doesn't live just in here. He very well might be waiting for you in your car. He very well might be waiting for you at home. There's no, it's freedom. I don't like creating a ultra emotional environment. I, I like creating one that's real and legit. And he's just as much in your home as he is here. So just know that. So be free to do whatever you want. <laughs> Stay and burn or go home and burn. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Turn your eyes here. Consume us with your gaze. Consume us with your love. Set our hearts on fire, God. 
We are the burning ones. We are the burning ones. We are the burning ones. Tonight, everything changes. 